Taijiang National Park in Tainan is known for its abundant wetland ecosystem and in particular for being home to the endangered black-faced spoonbill. But changing farming practices in Tainan are threatening the survival of these birds. The black-faced spoonbill previously benefited from shallow waters provided by milkfish farms. But with milkfish proving costly to breed, farmers have turned to different forms of aquaculture, leaving the birds searching for new places to forage. Our Sunday in-depth report. With winter about to give way to spring, a group of bird enthusiasts is using this opportunity to track migratory birds at Taijiang National Park. The most popular bird is the black-faced spoonbill, a species that has been in Taiwan for more than 150 years and is listed as a first-class endangered species. In 1989, the number of black-faced spoonbills fell to just 288, putting them on the brink of extinction. Through 30 years of international protection efforts, their numbers have gradually risen to around 3,000. The government specially designated Taijiang National Park wetlands to care for the black-faced spoonbill. Established in 2009, the Taijiang National Park includes Sizhao Wildlife Refuge, Qigu Lagoon, and other nearby areas. In addition to the area's rich ecosystem, local aquaculture includes farming milkfish. After the winter harvest, water levels are typically lowered to around 30 centimeters, allowing the black-faced spoonbill to eat the remaining fish unwanted by farmers. Oyster ponds have a lot of random fish which farmers can't use, but are the favorite food of the black-faced spoonbill. During the winter of 2014, the number of black-faced spoonbills coming from Northeast Asian areas, total 2,034, roughly 62% of the world's entire population. This is the highest number ever recorded, but there are signs a crisis could be looming. In the 1990s, most of the black-faced spoonbills were located here. But in November 2014, we found that this primary habitat only accounted for about one-third of the population. Taijin Zhu has been recording the number of black-faced spoonbills in Taijiang National Park for the past 15 years. Recently, it is found that their numbers in this primary habitat have been falling each year, which may be due to a change in farming practices. Farmers now think that too much manpower, money and electricity are needed to raise milkfish. For this reason, they're changing their operations. As farmers can no longer afford to raise milkfish, they are switching over to higher value products such as clams. For nearly one hectare of clams, if you deduct the cost of breeding and rent, you can earn income of about 200,000 NT. In a very good year, if everything goes well, you can earn about 4 million NT. Unlike milkfish farming, where a winter break is needed, clams have no trouble with the four seasons. They don't need water levels to be lowered. This change makes it more difficult for black-faced spoonbills to feed. Clam farming requires water of about one meter deep. This is too deep for the black-faced spoonbill, which can only feed when water is about 20 centimeters deep. To promote ecological conservation, the Tainan city government began offering low-cost rent in 2009 to fish farmers in the Chigu area near Taijiang National Park. The government stipulated that only shallow water farming was permitted to allow black-faced spoonbills and herons to forage. The National Park Service created experimental pools to encourage farmers to continue the cultivation of milkfish. We hope that changes in farming practices in some areas allow us to begin operations to restore the original balance and help support the black-faced spoonbill. After three years of trying to make wetland wildlife more abundant, one can see more mangroves. This experimental fish pond is gradually attracting black-faced spoonbills for foraging. Black-faced spoonbills come to forage and spend the night. We can actually see some success in attracting black-faced spoonbills back to the area. 
While the National Park continues to hope that farmers will return to traditional fish farming, many have little interest. They say shallow water milkfish farming is simply too hard to earn a living. In deep water, we can raise around 20,000 to 30,000 fish, and with shallow water, just 5,000. When it comes to milkfish, we'll definitely lose money. Our electricity costs alone are so high. Before, they were just over 30,000 NT a month, but now they've risen to more than 100,000 NT a month. Some are seeking a balance between conservation and earning a living. In fact, there are many successful international cases of migratory birds being repopulated. In the United States, the government has provided free land to farmers to grow crops in exchange for the farmers letting migratory wild ducks and geese forage the land. Land within this area, along with surrounding properties, should be used by farmers to plant corn. After it is planted and farmers have earned their money, some should be left on the ground to feed migratory birds. Blackface spoonbills can be seen in more and more places throughout Taiwan, but with economic factors influencing their habitat, they face yet another threat. A balance must be struck between the livelihoods of farmers and the needs of these endangered birds.